Well, I think there is a positive side and there is a negative side. On the positive side, I came into office championing the potential for innovation to improve governance. One of the things I'm most proud of doing as mayor was uh, leading through an effort to create an open data policy in Charlottesville, which allows people to hack our data. Every government agency that has data sets, now it's up and available to the public so that it can be uh, it can be used and patterns can be found and the public can freely figure out what we're doing well and what we're not doing well. And that is a, was a very innovative approach to figuring out how to um, how to how to have more transparency, but also let people kind of work with our data and hack it. Um, you know, and, and what social media has done is it has enabled, without any filter at all, government officials and leaders to get messages out to the, the public and communicate with many more people with no cost. And that that's a huge change. You don't have to pay for postage and so on. But there is definitely a darker side to a lot of this. Um, I've been to several presentations recently where they have talked about how um, how much harm the social media platforms can be doing to us when they were designed basically to be very addictive, and they're designed for, you know, in some cases for teenagers to, you know, to care how many likes one is getting and to to really distill issues into just. Uh, you know, a good and a bad that you care very strongly about. And in that sense, some of this technology really has made us much more susceptible to extremism, which is very worrisome to me. Also, obviously, because I think of a lot of irresponsibility among the platforms in terms of policing manipulative or deceptive content, in terms of overseeing a lot of money and a lot of campaigns, the source of which is hidden from people, it has enabled tremendous amounts of manipulation and deception and campaigns that have been run to our detriment. So to that degree, these platforms have been um, very detrimental to democracy. And then that's not even getting into fake news and conspiracy theories, which have, you know, I've experienced a tremendous amount of this as a public official. And it's really alarming because it's premised on intimidating people from doing the hard work of promoting toleration, of standing up for values of fairness, for calling out discrimination. And intimidation in any form is bad because it's not going through a, a regular process. So I, you know, I've, I've, I think that there are many ways that we need to improve. It needs to start with us. We need to be a lot more intelligent about our use of social media, but I think there needs to be a lot more uh, self-regulation, possibly oversight of these of these entities because they really have shown that they're, in many cases, a, a force for harm. I think that it begins with understanding the dangers that we're faced with and really innovating around them. Uh, I went to a presentation earlier this year. There's a new organization called the Center for Humane Technology that really is founded from within Silicon Valley and they understand the consequence of becoming addicted to these devices for our political and our educational spheres. That's really important. You need fact-checking outfits that can correct and that have traction, that have lots of people following them, that can correct the, the rumors and the fake news that get spread so quickly online. That's essential. You need investigative journalism that is well-funded and is doing serious explainer pieces that's really investigating stories and that becomes a touchstone of trust because we need more trust in our society when you have so much cynicism and so much anger and so much manipulation behind the scenes of us you need more trusted sources so all of us need to support and create more trusted institutions whether that you know and leaders whether that's individuals or whether it's institutions that you go to for uh for for facts and i think that we we need to support leaders and citizens in their efforts to, you know, to kind of, you have to have very thick skin and a very stiff 
backbone to deal with public life nowadays because it's assumed that you'll troll or that you'll harass a lot of people in public life. And so, especially if you get involved in controversial issues. So on the one hand, you want people to, to have thick, thick skins and stiff backbones, but stiff spines, but you also want there to be alliances for them and you want there to be support. So I would encourage everybody to, um, to really look for how do you support people who are standing up against fake news and who are standing up against trolling and who are standing up against kind of divide and conquer modes of, of mm -hmm. politics and really play a very active role as a citizen, as an institution, as a corporation, as a nonprofit, as a, as a school, really reward and, and support people who are trying to build a culture based on trust and learning and education and, and statesmanship and, 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 um, you know, helping government achieve outcomes and not just kind of posture about things. And on the other hand, call out those, uh, the, those ideas, those actors who are really uh, degrading the quality of our democracy. It takes both sides. Yeah, on this positive note, thank you very much. You're welcome.